All right, I got six o'clock, so we will call the meeting to order. Uh, we This is a request by Ideal Movers and Storage for a variance from the provisions of section 4.2, 6.2.1.3, .2 and 5.1.7 of the zoning bylaw for 100 Mill Valley Road, uh, seeking 15.3 feet side setback relief. Um, Attorney Reedy um, is here on behalf of Ideal Movers. Uh, you wanna tell us uh, what's going on? Sure. Thanks so much, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Tom Reedy, attorney with Bacon Wilson uh, and Amherst here on behalf of Ideal Movers. If I could share my screen, Mr. Chair, that might be the simplest way to do this. Sure. Okay. Okay, so if you can see my screen, this is just an aerial of the, the area that we're talking about. You've got Russell Street, Route 9, up towards the top of the screen. You've got the mall, the malls, plural, I should say, um, Wayne Goulet's property, you've got that solar array. And this is the property that we're talking about right here. The balance of this owned by Gordy Smith uh, in APR, but this is the property that we're talking about. And now I'm gonna try to share the plan. And so this is the building footprint it's a three-story building for uh, climate-controlled self-storage. Um, and as you'll see, north is to the top. You've got the main building here. You've got a secondary building a little bit to the east. You've got um, entrance, exit. And if you follow the cursor, the entrance path, essentially goes under what we're proposing to be a porta cochere, which is if you pulled up to a hotel, it's probably the only other time I've seen it. Uh, you can actually drive underneath it and go into the space. And so I'll flip to a, a close up. So that's what you just saw. And now here's that three story building footprint. Here is the uh, property line that you saw on the first page. You've got to the building about 54 and a half feet. Your, um, zoning bylaw limits or requires a setback of 40 feet. And so this is about where that 40 foot setback line is. You'll see that we have a couple of uh, stanchions, I'll call them support structures for that overhanging port of Cachere that come out to here. So it's about 24.7 feet from the property line, which is about 15.3 feet short of that 40 foot setback. But that main building, as you'll see, is about 54 and a half feet from that southerly setback so the or southerly property line so the building itself complies it's this porta cochere which does not um we have been through the planning board and i see that uh, the clerk of the planning board is on um and we have received a special permit uh, and site plan approval for this proposal and one of the conditions is, was because this is the plan they approved it was subject to your approval. I don't want to speak for the planning board, but my sense was they had no opposition to what it was that we were proposing here. They, in fact, seem to really like the building. Um, and, and this port of Cachere is a, I think it goes with the building and is a really nice touch. Um, so with that, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions uh, that you have um, specific to the request. What would be the problem for the owners if the variance was not granted? In other words, what hardship do they have to? Yeah, so it's about. so it, it's going to be financial, and whether that's financial as they're going to have to reduce the size of the building to make this porta cachere exist, you know. So you've got fifteen point three feet that they might have to reduce the entire with the building or do some funky uh, geometry, which is obviously gonna be more expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this Porta Cachere is an integral part to the overall um, proposal. I was it, not the building structure, but the proposal, because it's, uh, I don't wanna say higher end, but it's, I think we heard the quote for the cost of the building was like $9.5 million. Um, was the cost. And so I, I would think that to eliminate this uh, would detract from or cause the building to be manipulated would would detract from really what this uh, proposal could be. And so it would be a, a financial hardship. Okay. 
what's the address what's the address of this of this building this is actually on south maple street yeah there so there isn't a building there yet it's just that vacant parcel um but i think so according to the assessor i think it only is 100 mil valley road i think that's what it has oh okay um but yeah so this is it's it's this parcel 17 i want to try to zoom in a little bit so it's this parcel 17 and this parcel 16.1 okay the, and there's you know also there's wetlands on the northerly side of the property so we can't shift the building and i probably should have mentioned that before we can't shift the building any more north if we could then we wouldn't even be having this conversation with you but we're really getting pinched coming to the south because of the location of the wetlands and part of it is that this is all APR land, about 80 acres of APR land, and it's never going to be developed. Um, you know, it, it's not like that encroachment into the side yard setback is adjacent to a residential uh, development uh, or, or any uh, development. For that 16, 16 is APR land and 16.1 and 17 are carved out as, as industrial zone or commercial. You got it, precisely. Yeah. Yep. And the rail trail is to the north. Correct, right here where the mouse is, that's the rail trail. Um. I don't. I don't have any concerns with this. Uh, the the shape and topography and and the uh, soil conditions on the property are are grounds for a variance. Those are some of the conditions that we can consider for a variance. Um, the, the land. The property is hemmed in by uh, by wetlands and by APR land. So there's no um, there's no work around to try to make it big enough to to abide by the setback. So I, I would I'm comfortable with with that. I, I don't I don't see any concern there. It's a um, it's you know it's, it's the portico share so it's it's an overhang and they uh, it's not like they're building the building way bigger than they would be able to by right it's just an attachment um obviously we don't uh, go by precedent but i know we've given people permission to build overhangs that go into um into that encroach on setbacks before the, um just because they they don't really um they don't really disturb the like the the purpose of a setback. You can see underneath them they don't they don't destroy sight lines or uh, or get too close to people's property. So those are my thoughts. Uh, I I don't have a problem with it. Jason or Linda, what do you guys think? I don't have any any questions. I don't have a problem with it either. It seems like it would be unreasonable to ask them to move the building just fifteen feet. So. I agree with both. Seems reasonable. Um, is there any, I see, I, I see Bill's on the call, uh, Kathy's with Ideal Movers. Um, at, at, obviously, um, there's no concern from the, the APR landowner, who, that, that's Gordon Smith. Yeah, and he's, he's the one selling this parcel to uh, Ideal Movers to begin with, so he doesn't have an issue with it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, is there is there anyone else on the call that would like to like to speak to this or ask any questions or Bill or Shyla, I guess. Um, sure, I'll just. I, I was just popping in to um, see if I could catch the beginning of the Ideal Movers um, project before they come to the ConCom tonight. Did that already happen, or? That's what we're doing right now. Oh, okay, great. Sorry for the late arrival. So what uh, what they discussed, Shiloh, is that there is um, the, there's wetlands to the north of the property, and there's APR land kind of hemming it in. So this is sort of the only way they could site the site the building to with the overhang and to fit it onto the the parcel that's that's developable there. Uh, but they are not encroaching on the wetlands or or going into that area. They it's a uh, just a setback on the south side of the property. Okay. So if I could just share my screen for a moment, I uh, wanted to uh, show you 
the, uh, these are the uh, dimensional tables and in all other districts, but industrial, the side yard setback is only 15 feet, uh, including the business district. It is 40 feet in the industrial district for the purposes of creating separation, but uh, the abutter to the south who would be the only one affected by this has the land in APR already. So nothing is going to be built on that parcel anyway. So the, um, the separation, the, the goal of separation seems to be somewhat uh, a moot point here. Um, thank you, Bill. That, that's that's helpful too. So that uh, obviously an industrial district, we're trying to keep industrial uses uh, separated from each other. So that's why there's the increased setback. But there is um, there won't be any other industrial uses abutting this, so it's uh, not as necessary here. Um, that makes sense. Uh, Jason, Linda, you uh, you want to we'll close the we'll close the we'll close the uh, comments if there's no other comments and you want to make a motion. Yeah, no other comments. No, look straightforward. All right, so I'll make a motion to grant the variance to um, ideal movers to encroach upon the um, property line. Um, I don't have the actual verbiage written in front of me, so I'm kind of winging that one, Andrew. <laughs> um, 15, 15, uh, point three, uh, 24 point seven 15, 24.7 feet from the edge, from the edge of the Porto Cochere. To 24.7 feet uh, within the auto kosher. And the, the setback change is 15.3. That's right. Okay. Yep. 24.7 instead of 40. Uh, Linda, we have a second? Second. Yes. Linda? Yes. I'm a yes. Motion passes. Thank you very much, as always. Thank you. <laughs> Quick one. I think that's good night, right? That's it. That's good, good night. night. <laughs> good night. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. So that's uh, that's the only thing we had on tonight. So we will uh, we'll adjourn the hearing. Thanks, guys. Okay. okay.